There is one thing, one thing in particular that I love about 3D printing, and I love pizza. It doesn't really matter how complicated of a project, like some of this stuff. Like this stuff, a pretty dank looking Wolverine model, airsoft gun. The average Joe that doesn't really care what you do will kind of look at you and say, well, good stuff, Simon, good job. But they act it out, so that's what you gotta look for. And that's when you bring out the big guns. At this point, their heads are going you can probably tell just by looking at this picture that it works by varying the thickness. And there is a great software that lets you do this. Check this out. So this software lets you upload any photo and it automatically generates the level of grays. It basically exaggerates the darker areas and makes the lighter areas more shallow. So taking a look at my skin, it's more shallow than something like my hair, which is dark. So going back to the lithophane, by knowing this, less light is able to pass through the darker hair and more light is able to pass through the skin, which is light. Lithophanes are, are pretty funny, you know, they kind of sneak up on you. When you think you have the best settings you could possibly have on your 3D printer, the lithophane is there to knock it down again. Uh, you see, it's very, very easy to make a crap looking lithophane. It uh, seems to be almost impossible to make a good looking one. I guess the perfect picture doesn't exist. There are a couple of things you have to do before you can start printing your lithophane. And by a couple of things, I mean a whole lot of things. There are mainly two softwares you can use. One is 3DP Rocks and the other one is Lithophane Maker. Lithophane Maker is a bit more modern. It does offer more ways of modifying your picture, which is great, but it's a little bit more complicated. So I'm gonna stick with 3DP Rocks, which I've already done a video about. So I'm just gonna go for the golden nuggets in this one. Let's get Excelsior in here. I like outer curve. I tend to get better results using outer curve and it can stand by itself, which is nice. That's a common question. Do I print it flat or do I print it vertically? The answer is you print it standing up. That tends to yield better results. A high number thickness will allow the software to cut up your picture in more levels of gray, which in the end will make the picture look better. Number one, it will take longer time for the printer to print something that has a good thickness. It will also require more light from behind to backlit the picture and make it appear. Three millimeters works just fine. I like to use a border, that's uh, the frame around the picture. Uh, I use four millimeters, that seems to be the edge where... So that's basically a overhang, so you gotta watch, you can't put a border that is much higher than four millimeters. If you haven't done already, jump over to image settings and flip it to positive image. That should be default. A couple of key settings in the slicer. First off, I'm using Angus Modified Ender 3 Profile. Works great. Push the infill all the way to 100%. Nothing important to see on the extruder side. The layer, here's where it gets interesting. So the primary, primary layer height can be set to, I wouldn't go higher than 0.2 millimeters. And that's still pretty fine. 0.16, that's perfect. The outline parameter shells, depending on the thickness of your lithophane, five is usually enough, but just bump this up all the way so everything you print is, is parameters. You could also do 100% infill and just one parameter, that works as well, doesn't, doesn't necessarily matter. Additions, I am using a skirt to keep the corners from warping. The infill is not important, support we don't use, temperature, I, you don't need a heated bed, you never need a heated bed for PLA. Cooling, 75%, works great. G-code, that's how my stuff looks. Scripts, speeds, one of the most important settings not to go too fast. I'm using 2200 millimeters per minute. Go to movement behavior 
and go to and, and cross check avoid crossing outline for travel movements. That basically means that the nozzle will be forced to travel within the lithophane. So you never have residue from the nozzle catching on the outside of the perimeter. That's all the settings you need. I mean, that's basically 3D printing 101. If the lithophane looks like crap, you blame the printer. I do 87% of all my lithophanes on the Ender 3. If you have an iPhone and like spending money for no particular reason, you may want to get the more exclusive filament, but I'm using the cheap white PLA that you can get in any store. I like doing the family photos on the clear white. This is the off-white, this is the clear white. The off-white gives kind of an ancient look to it, something you may not want to have on, on a family photo. I, I I really love lithophanes, as you probably can tell. So I started a website, rclifon.com, where people that do not have 3D printers can order lithophanes. Only available in Sweden. So for you, the 99% of the people watching that do not live in Sweden, this message was a complete waste of time. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have an awesome day. Bye.